bit of look at some of the to some of the younger players as well. Now that's him out, and not only do you bring him back, you know, he got it done pretty quickly because then you hear the the guys that really were, you know, key for us last dress it as well. Cruz strikes out. Nastiest stuff I face is pre-lander. <laughs> I mean. Man. Spring training baseball started yesterday for the Mariners, and there's someone we have to talk about. The Seattle Mariners already have a homelander, but now they have Prelander. This is Prelander Baroa, 22 year old starting pitcher and potentially converted reliever for the Seattle Mariners. We'll get into his spring training debut and his pitch arsenal, but you want to hear how he got to this spot. Prelander was originally signed by the Minnesota Twins as an international free agent out of the Dominican Republic in 2016 at the age of 16. He played in rookie ball for his first couple years, and heading into 2019, his scouting report stated, and I quote, Tilt Baroa's cap another 15 degrees and he's a dead on mound ringer for Fernando Rodney, which I mean kind of works out because Fernando was also a Mariner for a couple years. At the time, his best pitch was his fastball, sitting 92 to 94 and touching 96, but he was still working to command his changeup and slider. Then on July 31st, 2019, the San Francisco Giants traded Sam Dyson to the Minnesota Twins in exchange for outfielder Jalen Davis, Prelander Baroa, and Kai Wei Tang. Dyson would pitch in 12 games for the Twins to the tune of a 7.15 ERA before violating the league's domestic violence policy, and he hasn't been in baseball since. This footage here is from 2019, but once 2021 started, his numbers took off. This start here is against the Modesto Nuts, and the guy at the plate is a familiar face, Nuelvi Marte. Throughout 2021, Prelander's strikeout numbers ticked up. He had 24 starts on the year, pitching to a 3.56 ERA with 135 strikeouts in 98 and two thirds innings, which is 12.3 Ks per nine, but he did struggle with his command, issuing 53 walks over those 98 innings. In 2022, Barola would make four starts in high A for the Giants before the Giants needed some infield depth on their major league roster. So they traded Barola to the Mariners in exchange for Donovan Walton. He would appear in 24 games for the Giants, finishing with a 158 batting average. Prelander would go on to make 13 starts in Everett for the Aqua Sox, pitching to a 2.41 ERA with 81 strikeouts in 52 and a thirds innings. That's a 13.9 strikeouts per nine. Again, struggling with the command a bit, issuing 5.5 walks per nine. And how awesome is this? The Aqua Sox wore a baby Yoda uniform, and this one here is Prelander's. He would go on to finish out the year in double A for the Arkansas Travelers, and in nine starts, he pitched to a 4.37 ERA with 53 strikeouts and 25 walks. Again, a strikeout per nine of 13.6. And this picture here is after Prelander went five innings with 11 strikeouts, and the Travelers pitching staff combined for a no-hitter. Now heading into 2023, here's where we stand. The Mariners essentially have six starters right now, not including Bryce Miller, with Luis Castillo, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, Robbie Ray, and then Marco Gonzalez, Chris Flexen, and Bryce Miller all competing for that fifth spot. While waiting in the minors, you have Emerson Hancock, Taylor Dollard, and Prelander Baroa. I'll start off by saying that this is a great problem to have. Out of these guys yet to hit the major leagues, Prelander is the most likely to come out of the bullpen for a couple reasons. First off, Bryce Miller, Emerson Hancock, and Taylor Dollard all have four to five pitches that they throw, whereas Baroa really is a two pitch pitcher. He relies heavily on that fastball and slider and has a changeup if needed. And since he's changed grips similar to Matt Brash and Bryce Miller's slider, he's been able to have more control on that slider, which has a sharp downward break instead of more so horizontal. The other reason is his command. Throughout the minor leagues, he's shown that he walks more guys than a typical starter would, which again would profile to more of a bullpen guy. Effectively wild, you might call it. And again, Hancock, Dollard, and Miller all have pretty solid command. Then factor in that Baroa as a starter was throwing 95 to 99, put him in the bullpen and watch him break triple digits every outing. And imagine a bullpen with Andres Munoz, Matt Brash, Paul Sewald, Prelander Baroa, Diego Castillo, and others, and there's no easy at bat for opponents. Now going back to his spring training debut yesterday, Prelander pitched two innings, allowing one walk and one hit, and striking out three batters. And the lineup he faced included Xander Bogarts, Manny Machado, Juan Soto, and Nelson Cruz. And Tom Murphy said after the game that the reason why he was able to get Nelson Cruz to swing like this is because with that slider he has, it has the spin of a regular slider, but because it drops more so vertically than horizontal, the batters don't really know what to do with it. And here's Harry Ford with his opinion. Nastiest stuff I face is uh, Prelander. <laughs> I mean, 
Man, I think I had my three worst at bats I've ever had in my life against him yesterday. <laughs> like, it, it was just, it was the craziest thing. Like, he threw a slider, and I swear to God, like it went over my batter helmet. Like, so I couldn't see it because of like the thing right here. And so I'm like, okay, ball, right down the middle. Okay, ball, right down the middle. Oh, all right. Goes to down, strike three. <laughs> but he's 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 got some nasty stuff. Thank you for watching, and I'll put a link on the right side of the screen to my player profile series. Else? All right, guys, goodbye, Zon, and don't forget it. Yeah.